We're starting chapter four of the Sea of Monsters. The chapter is called Tyson Plays with Fire. Mythologically speaking, if there's anything I hate worse than trios of old ladies, it's bulls. Last summer, I fought the Minotaur on top of Half Blood Hill. This time, what I saw up there was even worse. Two bulls, and not just regular bulls, bronze ones, the size of elephants. And even that wasn't bad enough. Naturally, they had to breathe fire too. As soon as we exited the taxi, the Gray Sisters peeled out, heading back to New York, where life was safer. They didn't even wait for their extra three drachma payment. They just left us on the side of the road, Annabeth with nothing but her backpack and knife, Tyson and me still in our burned up tie-dye gym clothes. Oh man, Annabeth said, uh, looking at the ring, uh, battle ra raging on the hill. What worried me wor well, most weren't the bulls themselves or the 10 heroes in full battle armor who were getting their bronze plated booties whooped. What worried me was that the bulls were raging all over the hill, even around the backside of the pine tree. That shouldn't have been possible. The camp's magical boundaries didn't allow monsters to uh, cross past Thalia's tree, but the metal bulls were doing it anyway. One of the heroes shouted, Border Patrol, to me! A girl's voice, gruff and familiar. Border Patrol, I thought. The camp didn't have a Border Patrol. It's Clarice, Annabeth said. Come on, we have to help her. Normally rushing to Clarice's aid would not have been high on my to-do list. She was the one of the biggest bullies at camp. The first time we met, she tried to introduce my head to a toilet. She was also a daughter of Ares, and I had, very, I had a very serious disagreement with her father last summer. So now the god of war and all his children basically hated my guts. Still, she was in trouble. Her fallow warriors were scattering, running in panic as the bulls charged. The grass was burning in huge swatses, swats, swatses around the pine tree. One hero screamed and sw uh, waved his arms as he ran in circles, the horsehair plume on his helmet blazing like a fiery mohawk. Clarice's own armor was charred. She was fighting with a broken spear shaft, the other end embedded uselessly in the metal joint of one, of, of one bull's shoulder. I uncapped my ballpoint pen. It shimmered, growing longer and heavier until I held the bronze uh, sword of Akalumos in my hand. Uh, Tyson, stay here. I don't want you to take any more chances. No, Annabeth said. We need him. I stared at her. He's mortal. He got lucky with the dodgeballs, but he can't. Percy, do you know what those are up there? The cochleus bulls, made by Hespestus himself. We can't fight them without Medusa's sunscreen. Uh, I'm sorry, Medea's sunscreen, SPF 50,000. We'll get burned to a crisp. Medea's what? Annabeth rummaged through her backpack and cursed. I had a jar of topical of tropical coconut scent uh, sitting in my nightstand at home. Why didn't I bring it? I learned a long time ago not to question Annabeth too much. Just uh, it just made me more confused. Look, I don't know what you're uh, talking about, but I'm not going to get uh, let Tyson get fried. Percy, Tyson, stay back. I raised my sword. I'm going in. Tyson tried to protest, but I was already running up the hill toward Clarice, who was yelling at her, boar, at her, at her patrol, trying to get them into uh, flanks formation. It was a good idea. The few who were listening lined up shoulder to shoulder, locking their shields to form an ox hide and bronze wall, their spears bristling over a top, uh, uh, the top like porcupine quills. Unfortunately, Clarice, Clarice could only muster six campers. The other four were still running around with their helmets on fire. Annabeth ran toward them, trying to help. She taunted one of the bulls into chasing her, then turned invisible, completely confusing the monster. The other bull charged Clarice's line. I was halfway up the hill, not close enough to help, and Clarice hadn't even seen me yet. 
The bull moved deadly fast for something so big. Its metal hide gleamed in the sun. It had fist, uh, fist-sized rubies for eyes and horns of polished silver. When, I op- when it opened its hinged mouth, a column of white hot flame blasted out. Hold the line, Clarice ordered her warriors. Every, uh, whatever else you could say about Clarice, she was brave. She was a big girl with cruel eyes like her father's. She looked like she was born to wear Greek battle armor, but I didn't see how she could, uh, could stand against that bull's charge. Fortunately, at that moment, the other bull lost interest in finding Annabeth. It, unfortunately, at that moment, the other bull lost interest in finding Annabeth. It turned, wheeling behind Clarice on uh, her unprotected side. Behind you, I yelled, look out. I shouldn't have said anything because all I did was startle her. Bull number one crashed into her shield and the flanks broke. Uh, Clarice went flying backward and landed in a smoldering patch of grass. The bull charged past her, but not before blasting the other heroes with its fiery breath. Their shields melted right off their arms. uh, They dropped their weapons and ran as bull number two closed in on Clarice for the kill. I lunged forward and grabbed Clarice by the straps of her armor. I dragged her out of the way just as bull number two freight train passed. I gave a good uh, swipe with Riptide. I gave it a good swipe with Riptide and cut a huge gash in, the, in its flank, but the monster just creaked and groaned and kept on going. It hadn't touched me. I could feel the heat of its uh, its metal skin. Its body temperature could have microwaved a frozen burrito. Let me go, Clarice pummeled my hand. Percy, curse you. I dropped her in a heap next to the pine tree and turned to face the bulls. We were on the inside slope of the hill now. The valley of Camp Hapla directly below us. The cabins, the training facilities. The big house, all of it at risk of these bulls. If these bulls got past us, Annabeth shouted orders to the heroes, telling them to spread out and to keep the bulls distracted. Bull number one ran uh, ran a wide arc, making its way back toward me. As it passed the middle of the hill, uh, where, where the invisible boundary line should have kept it out, it slowed down a little, as if it were struggling against a strong wind. But then it broke through and kept coming. Bull number two turned to face me, fire sputtering from the gash I'd cut in its side. I couldn't tell if it felt any pain, but its ruby eyes seemed to glare at me, just uh, like I just made things personal. I couldn't fight both bulls at the same time. I'd have to take down bull number two first, cut off its head before bull number one charged back into range. My arms felt uh, already felt tired. I realized how long it had been since I'd worked out with Riptide, how out of practice I was. I lunged, but bull number two blew flames at me. I rolled aside as uh, the air turned to pure heat. All the oxygen was sucked out of my lungs. My foot caught on something, a tree root maybe, and pain shot up my ankle. Still, I managed to slash with my sword and lop off part of the monster's snout. It galloped away, wild and disoriented. But before I could feel too good about that, I tried to stand, and my left leg buckled underneath me. My ankle was sprained, maybe broken. Bull number one charged straight toward me. No way could I crawl out of its path. Annabeth shouted, Tyson, help him! Somewhere near, toward the crest of the hill, Tyson wailed, Can't! Can't get through! I, Annabeth Chase, give you permission to enter camp. Thunder shook the hillside and suddenly Tyson was there barreling toward me yelling, Percy needs help. Before I could tell him no, he dove between me and the bull just as it unleashed a nuclear firestorm. Tyson, I yelled. The blast swirled around him like a red tornado. I could see the black silhouette of his body. I knew what horrible, uh, with horrible certainty that my friend had, bis- had just been turned into a column of ashes. But when the fire died, Tyson was still standing there, completely unharmed. 
Not even his grin grungy clothes were scorched. The bull must have been as surprised as I was because before I could un it could unleash a second blast, Tyson balled his fist and slammed him into the bull's face. Bad cow! His fist made a crater that uh, where the bronze bull snout used to be. Two small columns of flame shot out of its ears. Tyson hit it again, and the bronze crumpled under his hands like aluminum foil. The bull's face now looked like a sock puppet pulled inside out. Down, Tyson yelled. The bull staggered and fell on its back. Its legs moved feebly in the air, stream, steam coming out of its ruined head in odd places. Annabeth ran over it to check on me. My ankle felt like it was filled with acid, but she gave me some Olympian nectar to drink from her canteen, and I immediately started to feel better. There was a burning smell that I later learned was me. My hair on my arms had been completely singed off. The other bull, I asked. Annabeth pointed down the hill. Clarice had taken care of bad cow number two. She impaled it through the back leg with a celestial bronze spear. Now, with its snout half gone and a, gas, a huge gash in its side, it was trying to run in slow motion, going in circles like some kind of merry-go-round animal. Clarice pulled off her helmet and marched toward us. A strand of her uh, st stringy brown hair was smoldering, but she didn't seem to notice. You ruin everything, she yelled at me. I had it under control. I was too stunned to answer. Annabeth grumbled. Good to see you too, Clarice. Ah, she screamed. Don't ever, ever try saving me again. Clarice, Annabeth said. You've got wounded campers. That sobered her up. Even Clarice cared about her soldiers under, or, or, even Clarice cared about the soldiers under her command. I'll be back, she growled, then trudged off to assess the damage. I stared at Tyson. You didn't die. Tyson looked down as like he was embarrassed. I I'm sorry. I came to help. Disobeyed you. It's my fault, Annabeth said. I had no choice. I had to let Tyson cross the boundary line to save you. Otherwise, you would have died. Let him cross the boundary line, I asked. But Percy, she said, have you ever looked at Tyson, uh, Tyson closely? I mean, in the face. Ignore the mist and really look at him? See, the mist makes humans see only what their brains can process. I knew it uh, could fool demigods too, but... I looked at Tyson in the face. It wasn't easy. I'd always had trouble looking him dire directly, directly at him, though I never quite understood why. I thought it was because he'd always had peanut butter in his crooked teeth. I forced him uh, myself to focus at his big, lumpy nose, then a little higher at his eyes. No, not eyes. One eye. One large calf brown eye right in the middle of his forehead with thick eyelashes and big uh, tears trickling down his cheeks on either side. Tyson, I stammered, you're a cyclops, Annabeth I've offered, a baby by the looks of him, probably why he couldn't get past a boundary line as easily as the bulls. Tyson's one of the homeless orphans. One of the what? They're in almost all the big cities, Annabeth said, distaste with, uh, said distastefully. They're mistakes, Percy. Children of nature spirits and gods. Well, one god in particular, usually. And they don't always come out right. No one wants them. They get tossed aside. They grow up wild on the streets. I don't know how this one found you, but he obviously likes you. We should take him to Chiron. Let him decide what to do. But the fire, how? He's a cyclops, Annabeth paused, as if she were remembering something unpleasant. They work in the forges of the gods. They have to be immune to fire. That's what I was trying to tell you. I was completely shocked. I had never realized what Tyson was. But I didn't have much time to think about it just then. The whole side of the hill was burning. 
wounded heroes needed attention, and there were still two banged up bronze bulls to dispose of, which I didn't figure could fit in a normal in, no in our normal recycling bins. Clarice came back over and wiped the soot off of her forehead. Jackson, if you can stand, get up. We need to carry the wounded back to the big house. Let Tantalus know what's happening. What happened? What's happened? Tantalus, I asked. Uh, Tantalus, I asked. The activities director, Clarice said impatiently. Chiron is the activities director. Where's Argus? He's head of security. He should be here. Clarice made a sour face. Argus got fired. You two have been gone too long. Things are changing. But Chiron, he trained kids to fight monsters for over 300, 3,000 years. You, he can't just be gone. What happened? That happened, Clarice snapped. And she pointed to Thalia's tree. Every camper knew the story behind the tree. Six years ago, Grover, Annabeth, and two other demigods named Thalia and Luke had come to Camp Half-Blood, chased by an army of monsters. When they got cornered on top of this hill, Thalia, the daughter of Zeus, made her last stand here to give her friends time to reach safety. As she was dying, her father, Zeus, took pity on her and changed her into a pine tree. Her spirit had reinforced the magic borders of the camp, protecting it from monsters. The pine had uh, been there, been here ever since, strong and healthy. But now its needles were yellow. A huge pile of dead ones littered the base of the tree. In the center of the trunk, three feet from the ground, was a puncture mark the size of a bullet hole, oozing green sap. A, silver, uh, a, a sliver of ice ran through my chest. Now I understood why the camp was in danger. The magical borders were failing because Thalia's tree was dying. Someone had poisoned it. <laughs>